This is Kelly Hill, Executive Editor of RCR Wireless News. I'm here with Lindsay Notwell, who is SVP of 5G Strategy for Cradle Point. How are you? Hey, Kelly. Great to be here in beautiful Austin, Austin. Texas. Austin, yes, absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about Cradle Point and uh, give us the view so that we understand your perspective. Sure, sure. Cradle Point has been in business now for about 12 years, and we were the world's first LTE networking solution the 4g router way back in way back <laughs> in uh, 2012 and uh, we now full circle are coming uh, with 5g ready uh, capabilities and so it gives us the ability to provide a lot of of new use cases which is what we're going to talk about today uh, to the enterprise world because that's our market focus and so we do a lot of different things in that space whether it's in kiosks or vehicles or even in fixed locations. So we provide a lot of networking solutions in that space. So what do you see that's exciting about watching 5G develop and what CradlePoint can bring to that ecosystem? Yeah, so, so to me it's really kind of a second inflection point. Um, we had a huge tipping point when 4G launched because wireless became faster than a wire. And at that point, enterprises figured out that it was a legitimate wide area networking source because it, it's, it gave them freedom of time and place. They didn't have to wait for the wire to get installed and, and they could move it because a lot of times, you know, if they're connecting something, they've got to move it from one door to the next and they don't want to have to call to get that wire moved. So it was a huge inflection point for our business. I believe 5G is going to be that next watershed moment for a couple of reasons. One is because uh, it takes away some of the, the uh, barriers, the objections that customers have because it may not be fast enough or responsive enough. I mean, that's one of the things okay. that, or two of the things that 5G promised us to solve over 4G. And the other thing that we believe is coming is a return to a flat rate pricing model. Because hmm. one big objection that we have from customers is, you know, I want predictability in my bill. Absolutely. And so we believe that that will be a game changer for wireless operators who will see tremendous adoption because all of the things that they couldn't do in 4G, they now can do in 5G. Think, think wireless fiber. It's yeah. an awesome capability. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned um, connected vehicles. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned kiosks. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us how IoT plays into yeah. what you guys are preparing for and, and doing now. Sure. So we do a lot in the space of IoT. Um, think in all of those cases, even, even in a kiosk, it's not just connecting the kiosk. That would be called machine to machine in the old parlance. But a lot of times now there are sensors. You know, we have a an anti-tamper sensor in case somebody's trying to break in or a geolocation sensor because if somebody steals the kiosk, believe it or not, that happens. <laughs> and so, you know, we do geofencing so you can get alert and say, did you really mean to do that or do you want to lock and wipe sort of thing. Uh -huh. In the mobility space, think about a police vehicle. So think about having uh, the, the body cam and the dash cam and the mm -hmm. shotgun sensor mm -hmm. because when that shotgun gets pulled, a lot of times police departments want a live video feed. They don't want to just store the video on board. They want live feeds. And so all of those sensors are IoT sensors. <laughs> and even in locations, we've got a big uh, chain of fast food restaurants. They want to measure the temperature of the refrigerator or they want to make sure that the fryer oil gets changed at regular intervals. Yes. So okay. IoT is so pervasive in all of these kind of cases. Okay. Great. And you know, you gave us some great examples there. Are there ones that you've seen in real life, uh, you know, other ones that you can sort of tell us about that, you, that have been exciting for you? I think some of the most exciting advancements we're seeing in the use of healthcare, and we're going to talk about that specifically on our panel. Uh, there are, there are uh, companies that have been doing remote uh, telemedicine, let's just call it, uh, for a number of years now, either because they're in underserved areas, and so they're sending it to where customers are, patients are, and, mm -hmm. and can't get to where they need to be. And, and the millennials now want to have what they want to have, where they want to have it, and when they want to have it. And so a lot of cases, this whole telemedicine approach lets them bring docs to where they want to be and on their terms. That's a whole brand new use case that to me is just 
I call it remote SME, subject matter expert. It's like the next generation of kiosks. And so it's, we'll talk more about it yeah. at the panel. It's pretty exciting. Absolutely. Well, looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, Great. Lindsay. Yeah, good talking to you. Thank you.